We're gonna do a rolling pull real quick. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's just like that. The Bugatti is not a cheap vehicle. Coming in at $3 million, it is an engineering marvel. Now, I like this vehicle so much that I actually went and ordered another, the Sharon SS, coming in about a year. You can check out the other video for the spec session on that. But today we're gonna determine if this thing is really worth three million bucks. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna call out is just the general engineering on this vehicle. Mm -hmm. When they built the Veyron, it broke the top speed record back in the day, correct? Oh yeah, the SS. Crushed it. yeah, yeah. And then as you know, the Sharon Super Sport 300 Plus was the first vehicle to break the 300 mile an hour barrel. I think the first production vehicle that you can buy yeah. to break that barrier. And so you have to have a pretty special vehicle to be able to go that fast. And there's an incredible amount of engineering and it really shows largely in just the quality of the engine. I have given this thing a pretty rough life so far in the 9,000 miles or so that I have driven We will it. be selling it uh, next fall, Q4 when the SS gets here. So if you're interested in a Chiron <laughs> that's had a rough life, yes. we got one for you. And exhaust <laughs> is coming soon um, in the next two or three months to make this and thing. Just, just, yeah, just roll the clip of him scraping it at the Odoric's driveway. Oh, yeah. The car still works, that's why we're here. Yes. Another interesting fact, this entire vehicle is pretty much made out of carbon fiber. We were actually trying to uh, work with Whistling Diesel to do a towing contest, and we were trying to find a way to, to attach a tow strap, and we're like, Bugatti directly basically said, no, you don't want to do that. There's not really like a frame. It's all just kind of carbon tub and chassis, and it might just completely Space destroy Space-grade aluminum that would yes. just bend. Not, not yeah. a good idea. So unfortunately, that vlog is not coming soon. Somehow, despite all that carbon, this thing weighs over 4,000 pounds. W16. That, that'll do it. Yeah. That'll do it, man. Coming in the interior. Beautiful, high quality leather. Um, yeah. A lot of different interior options that you can spec out. This one's pretty clean. It has the one of one spirit blue stitching. Mm -hmm. The only Bugatti in the world with that stitching. Every Bugatti in one way or another is a one of one, right? I mean, it, is. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is at the end of the day. They wanted to stick with the timeless interior so you could look back at this in a hundred years and it doesn't look like it was dated for any particular sector. Um, that's something that I really like about this. This is the one vehicle that I can really take anywhere. I can drive 500 miles and I'm still going to be comfortable and enjoy it. There is no other hypercar, um, maybe even supercar for that matter, where, where I know I can be comfortable in it on a road trip. It feels like a Bentley, this car. It does. It's, it does. It's awesome. It really does. As you guys know, Bugatti is super, super old. Uh, they were founded in 1903, and the first vehicle they built was the Type 5. All of their cars since then really are over a million dollars. Like anything, any of the flagship cars, you're going to be paying a huge price for because the elegance and heritage Bugatti has yep. um, is timeless. They're a household name. It's kind of widely accepted. They're the, if not one of the best car manufacturers yeah. in the world. Yep. Um, and then they took a, they, they built cars for a little while, took a long break, and then they they revamped the brand in the 90s with the Bugatti EB110. Mm -hmm. And then as you know, that was replaced with the Veyron and now the Chiron. There's been some models in between, some special um, models, including the Mistral, which totally sold out. And that brings us to another point, right? Every, mm -hmm. every single model that they've released, I think in the last few years, um, has completely sold out. So it's pretty amazing that a vehicle over $3 million um, will sell out oftentimes before they even make it public. This is not necessarily the way that it's been in the past through some conversations that we've had. Actually, Bugatti did have to work a little bit to sell other models. There's, there's not a huge buying pool at this price mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, but in current economic conditions, uh, yeah, no problem selling these things. That might it's change as, yeah. uh, as we head into recession, but um, we shall see. We're gonna take this bad boy that Mr. Stradman wrapped for us <laughs> for a little drive. Um, the looks that I get now with pink and chrome are second to none. And I think it looks really nice. Thank you, Stradman, for doing this for us. But let's go have some fun in this thing and, and talk about what really, really hits home and why it is worth $3 bucks. So would I go back and buy this again at $3 million? Well, for $1 million, I think the best car for that is the Senna. If you had a million bucks, it's, is it the Senna? I don't think so. What's it for you? But you love the Senna. What Honestly, it if, if it were up to me, Senna. there's a lot of cars that I'd get for a million dollars. What's number one? The Senna. What's number one? A, a rebuilt Carrera GT. You can't say you can't. No. I can't. If I had a million dollars That's spend, not fair. There was a blacked out Courage GT. Nothing that rebuilt. That is half an hour away. All right, so you'd get a rebuilt fine, whatever. That's that's cheating, but that's okay. That's not. At, at two million bucks, I'm getting a Porsche 918. Are you getting a P1 at that point? Yeah, a P1 for me. All right, and then at three million bucks, I'm getting the Bugatti all day long. And there are some other elite cars in that tier. Koenigsegg's probably well above that, but let's just say three to four million dollars. You may get in a Jira in there, but probably not. 
LaFerrari, of course. Pagani BC territory is in that price, but I'm definitely going for the Bugatti. There is, of course, the clout factor that comes with this. Um, it is, in my opinion, from that three to $4 million range, there is nothing that, that shouts more clout than the Bugatti Chiron. Um, but it's also just a really well-manufactured car. We touched on it before that this thing has suffered a lot of my abuse and it starts up every single time. Yeah. The taillights may not be very reliable, <laughs> but mechanically, transmission, engine, clutch, incredibly solid. Yeah, I mean, this is, of, of hypercars, this is the Porsche 911 platform where yes. you can launch it all. I mean, not this car specifically, launch control hasn't been working, but you can beat the crap out of this car. You can track it, you can launch it, you can daily yep. drive it in the snow and the rain. We've done it and it takes it and it works every time. I love it. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, also, it can be driven in the winter. It's all wheel drive. Now the tires may not be all that grippy or great, um, but that doesn't stop me from driving around. When the roads are just cold, it actually gets pretty decent traction. Oh, yeah. It sticks to the ground, but in the snow, um, not good. It got stuck. <laughs> Clip and, it. Clip yes. it. So you got this directly after your Senna, which you said yep. that's what you'd yeah. buy for $1 million. Yeah. yeah, Senna was the first hypercar that I bought. Um, about six months later, I bought this. Um, I think that since I started getting supercars, the Bugatti was like the holy grail to me. Um, it's such just an amazing and exclusive car. I think this for a lot of people. Like it's, it just, is. it's Bugatti. Yeah. So I, I paid right around $2.8 million for this thing. I bought it from Marshall Goodman in Beverly Hills. Um, they took care of me really well. This thing was delivered in immaculate condition. It had just 350 miles on it and it was it was beautiful. And it, um, for those who don't know, 350 miles is delivery miles. That's how, yes. that's how many miles come on Bugattis when they're delivered. So the previous owner, may have driven this 50 miles yeah maybe which so basically which is a shame new. it's a shame um but we now have 8760 miles on this as of filming so in right at about a year and a half of ownership i put damn near 8300 miles on this and that is with all the other vehicles in the fleet not bad that that just goes to show you why this is such a great vehicle um i'm probably driving 15 to twenty thousand miles a year and that means that I've driven this in the last year and a half, um, roughly about a third of the time that I'm in a yeah. car. Although all these miles aren't, aren't me, the majority of them are on me, but you guys you guys definitely get some we usage do. out of it. We share the cars with the community, as you know, that's what the Hamilton Collection's all about. So there's certainly a factor of probably, you know, 500 miles or so that are driven by friends, family, random people that we decided to just let drive the vehicle. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says, he Stradman. Stradman. I'm not Stradman, but the, the, the Shroud looks just like his combo. That's really funny. Oh, man. He's Strad dead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> where, where the Bugatti Shroud really differentiates from the others and why it is ultimately my favorite car is it is really fast and really stable on the road. It sticks to the road. It sends you really fast in a straight line. It's really not meant for the track. So we've taken it to the track a few times, don't get me wrong and driven it hard and full send at the track. We shocked some of the people at the track with how hard we drove it, but like, it's not really meant for that. It's meant for going really fast in a straight line um, and doing it really comfortably. And so it's just kind of a combination of the reliability, the speed, the comfort, the clout. The, yeah, the road presence in this thing is crazy. Road presence, Especially course, pink and chrome right now. Yep. <laughs> it's, yes. It's nuts. I have done 200 miles an hour in this car and in the Long Ferrari. Yep. And this car feels so much more stable yes. than the Ferrari did at that speed. And it, this, it goes this feels, on. This feels more stable at, I went 211 miles an hour in this, and this feels more stable above 200 than any other car I have at 150. Agreed. It is, you feel really safe in this. It sticks to the road. You I don't, don't know how they do, how you do you design a car that does that? I mean, 16 cylinders, 1500 horsepower, yeah. 4,000 pounds. Uh, it has the recipe for great success. Massive wheels and tires. Yes, the brakes. Oh, another great is yeah. nothing compares to the, the braking capability on this vehicle. It is, it puts everything else to shame. It's hard It's hard to get another vehicle and hold it to this standard, to yeah. a good braking standard. A lot of people this. say that, that Bugattis really are in a league of their own, and they are. You can't even compare them to other cars. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't mean I don't enjoy driving other hypercars or supercars as much as I enjoy driving this because they're different. Yeah. Um, but like, you can't compare, like as a whole package, this is the GT3 RS of hypercars, yeah. where it's just good at everything. Yeah, true. They're awesome. True. Maybe we'll keep it instead of trading it in for the SS. Who knows? I've paid for half of the SS so far. Yeah. It's $2 million. So but would you ever drive a space, Shiron, if you, like, wouldn't would you rather have not. an EB110? Yeah, that's a good point. And, uh, why, why would I? Why would you have two of the same why, car? Especially when we could get the EB110 and the Veyron. Like, that would be, can you imagine rolling up to, like, a restaurant in With the three, three generations yeah. of Bugattis? 
That would be incredible. We're gonna do a rolling pull real quick. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's just like that. It's so fast. It that is, is so crazy. fast. I mean, I, I rarely gun it from 70. Usually it's just zero all the way up to whatever, 200. Yeah. But that just kicks, man. This car, from anywhere from 80 to 150 onward, is the same as a lot of super and hyper cars yes. from zero to 60 or yes. zero to 100. Like, yeah. Yeah. it really gets going after you're up 80, 90, 100, 110 miles an hour. That's so cool. Yeah, I think rolling start from 60 miles an hour, this crushes everything, including the GTR probably at that point. Agreed. Yeah, there we buddy. Go. There it goes. There she goes. Dude, that air brake is so crazy. Badass. How much do you think that really helps? Oh, uh, insane, an insane amount. Really? They actually did it on Top Gear. They were talking about it, how just the air brake alone on the Veyron yeah. produced more braking power than an average like Toyota minivan. An just average the what? Wing, like a Toyota minivan while braking. What? That just the air brake at, at speed incredible. produces more braking power than another a That's second car. Incredible. It's amazing. Those must be some really strong devices that hold the The hydraulics, the I can't up, even yes. imagine trying to design that. Can you imagine? I mean, if you look at it back there too, they're huge hydraulics. Is that your mom's Mini in front of us, Tommy? It's not, no, my mom's uh, Mini is an Iron Gate. Oh, it man. looks just like it. Love you, mom. Oh, man. If you went back to where you were when you bought this car, you had a Senna, that was a million dollars, and then you yeah. jump into a Chiron, would you do it again? Like how much value do yeah. you think yeah, so it's it's it's, it's held its value and then some. I think these are all going from about three point five. Now we have high mileage, so maybe maybe I would get three for this. Yeah. I think really high twos, um, low threes. Maybe really high twos. So I wouldn't walk away with a loss at the end of the day with this. So so the value is there. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to, right? So if, if you're driving a car and it's going to be worth a million dollars less, then you must really have to love it. Well, I love this thing and it's gained a couple hundred thousand dollars in equity. So value is off the charts in my opinion for that. And that's not normal. That's just the crazy car market. It, it is, a, but, but, you, but we don't know what it's done with hypers. It, it hasn't hit the supercars. So we're, already. we're two months into a, a very, like the Lamborghini Urus, Urus that's right next to me. We have our crew driving alongside us getting rollers up. That thing has taken a huge hit. Those were 320 grand during peak COVID even six months ago. And now they're at 250, 260. So the hyper market has not seen that happen yet. Um, they're holding stable and there are a few great deals to be had. Honestly, the Veyron, is a phenomenal buy price. It never really popped too much. And the EB110, they're both in the mid million dollar range, which I is crazy to me. I think steals right now. Indeed, especially, I agree. Especially super sports. Yeah. Um, those are really special cars that they haven't popped. And I, yeah. we were just talking to James about this. This could actually bite us in the butt because people could be watching this and it could change their opinion. But we were talking to James uh, Stradman about this. I've talked to some other people who have bought and sold Veyrons. Um, I think the super sport, especially the carbon orange yep. spec, I think those are gonna be ten million dollar cars someday. They may be. That's what. That's what. That's what I know you just mentioned. But that's what James said, right? Yeah. So. I agree with him wholeheartedly. You're in your shoes I again. Would. Even if you were to lose five hundred thousand dollars on this car, you I mean, would buy it again. I think the better question is, at that point, I didn't have nearly the side of the collection that I do today. And, yeah. and would I have bought this vehicle at that time, that early? And yes, like I don't think there was a better buy. If I wanted to go spend three million dollars of money, yeah. I, I think that this was the best. Because now option. you have a lot of Ferrari. You've driven Koenigseggs that yep. are comparably priced. Yeah. I think this is. I mean, the, the best even, buy for that. And I love the 918, but I don't know. I, I, I don't, I think that I bought the 918 at the right time in life. It was, it was good to experience that after a few other cars. But yeah, I, I would definitely go back and pull the trigger on this. And again, the price was right. I yeah. think I bought it at the right time in the you market did. along with a lot of the other cars. Yeah. I mean, it goes to show you like this car so much you bought another one that you can yeah. spec yourself. It's like, has there been a, that's, has there been a vehicle that I've had that I've bought another? I think this is the first one where I've bought another one of the same yeah, model, brand new. It is. I mean, that, that speaks for itself. Yes. At the end of the day, great freaking buy. We know that everybody wants to bust their butts, work hard, end up owning one of these. I genuinely want the best for you. If that is your goal, go out and do it. You have my support. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification button, most importantly. Thank you.